Welcome students. This video is about ANMAT preparation strategy for quantitative skills and reasoning skills. Let's first of all understand the structure of the section quantitative skills. Well, actually it's a section that's a mixture of quantitative ability and data interpretation. The section has 48 questions to offer for which you are given a time of 60 minutes. Out of these 48 questions, 28 questions are of quantitative aptitude. The remaining 20 questions usually come from data interpretation part. This part has 5 sets of 4 questions each. The paper has been standardized since last 4-5 years. So nearly this has been the breakup if we see various windows of last 4-5 years. Let's understand quant part first of all. Out of these 28 questions, 22 questions are independent questions. The remaining 6 questions they come with a question type data sufficiency which essentially uses the quant chapters only but they are a different format. These 28 questions can be further divided into various parts of mathematics or quant. For example, out of 28 questions, numbers generally has a usual higher share of 4 to 5 questions. Geometry on the other hand has a normal share of 4 to 5 questions as well. Percentage based questions for example, percentage increment, decrement, profit and loss, simple interest, compound interest, they also find their place up to 3 to 5 questions. Various applications of ratios, for example, time and work, time spent and distance, average, partnership, etc., they see a usual share of 4 to 6 questions. Other than this, we also see algebra based questions 3 to 4. And over and above this, we have also seen clocks and calendar based questions in the same section. As far as difficulty level is concerned, out of these 28 questions, 15 questions can be called easy. Over and above that, up to 7 to 10 questions are generally of moderate difficulty level in different windows. The remaining bunch of 3 to 7 questions are generally time consuming or they can be termed as difficult questions. As far as data sufficiency questions are concerned, generally we have seen a very manageable difficulty level with data sufficiency. So in short, they are relatively easier and very lucrative in the test paper. Coming to the preparation part of the quant section for NMAT. Well, we have a good representation of almost all chapters of quant in this section. So that means this demands going through all the chapters once. If you have solved all the questions in a distant past, let's say before 4-6 months, it's time to revise all the theories. Also add good size of practice for all the chapters. Easy to moderate questions are the target when it comes to collecting a bunch of questions for practice purpose. Data sufficiency has a share of 6 questions to ensure that you also have a good varieties of questions in data sufficiency for practice purpose. When it comes to practice, ensure that your material has a nice balance of number based questions, arithmetic based questions, geometry based questions, modern maths based questions, clocks and calendars etc. Over and above normal practice, try solving some sections. Sections are basically a bunch of 30 to 40 questions given in a format of test with some time limit where you have to select some questions over other questions to optimize your score. So just normal practice is needed initially, ultimately you should move towards quant sectionals which should have a representation of almost all traditional chapters. Now coming to data interpretation part of this section. The section has 20 questions spread across 5 sets. Generally all these DI sets are from traditional DI. By traditional DI, I mean table, bar charts, pie charts, line graphs, etc. So there is nothing challenging as far as cracking the logic is concerned. Although the format demands you to move at a very high speed and that is where exactly DI becomes challenging. Generally out of these five sets, we have seen up to two sets, very easy or very less time consuming to solve. Probably one more set would be moderate and within limit for a person who has prepared well. But then one or two sets are always there which are very time consuming and definitely worth leaving. Calculation is the key. We have observed that since these are very basic TI based questions, the key here is the hold of yours over calculation. So that was the format of data interpretation in quantitative skills section of NMET. Our preparation for data interpretation should be in line with that. So if there are traditional DI based questions in ANMAT paper, 
we should ensure that our preparation also includes those typical varieties of table, bar chart, pie chart, line graph, etc. in our practice. Remember, data interpretation is not math, it is something different, it needs specific practice. So if you haven't practiced it in past for various entrance examination, please do it. At least a practice of some dozen sets is advised to be very comfortable with the format, very comfortable with the calculation. Ensure that your sets have a decent challenging calculation based questions as well. While solving data interpretation sets, using options is a key. During practice, create a bunch of some DI sets, put a time limit uh, over it so that you get to choose some sets over others to maximize your score. This would be a real life practice because in AMAT, you generally skip one or two sets or even three sets at times just to get a nice score in the overall quantitative skill section. If calculation is the key, what all can be done to improve the calculation? First of all, practice is the answer. You do more practice, you'll be more comfortable with calculation. Over and above that, do practice of approximation or let's say approximate value of fractions. Basic values of 1 by 1 to 1 by 25 fractions that helps us solve many questions orally if not all. Basic hold over the tables is also expected in various entrance examination to deal with some basic calculation without much effort. So ensure that you also keep some part of your solving aside for this calculation practice itself. One of the key preparation strategy for any entrance examination is writing mock papers which are on the same format that the exam offers. So you ensure that you subscribe to some mock NMETs which give you a real NMET experience. Suppose you are in quant section already. You have a task of dealing with 48 questions in 60 minutes. Well, an approximate attempts of 30 to 35 genuine attempts are sufficient if you ensure good accuracy. We have 60 minutes. That means we need to finish many questions within two minutes if you wish to reach the cutoff of this section. Now, how can it be done? You start with the section and start attempting questions live. The paper has no negative marking. That means there is no point of stopping anywhere. If you know how to solve a quant question, attempt it. If you feel that it's difficult or time consuming or it may consume more than two minutes, please keep it aside. If you come across a DI set, we have five sets to deal with. You need to take a decision. Look at the set. The logical complexity probably would not be there. You will be checking for the time consumption that would be demanded by the set. If you feel that the set, all the four questions can be finished in six to seven minutes with near 100% accuracy, please go for it. If you feel that questions are demanding, more time consuming, you can solve them, but you don't want to solve them. It's perfect. Leave the set aside. We'll think about it later. In this entire journey, keep attempting quant question and keep judging DI sets based on the difficulty level or time consumption. That is how you maximize your score in mock NMETs and eventually in actual NMET. Welcome to the next part of the video that is the reasoning section of NMET paper. This section has 40 questions to be attempted in 38 minutes. Out of these 40 questions, approximately 10 to 12 questions are of verbal reasoning part. The remaining questions, they are generally logical reasoning questions. In verbal reasoning part, you can expect questions based on strength and weaken argument, sentence assertion, syllogism, etc. Course of action is also an important variety there. When it comes to logical reasoning, probably the most dominant part is the tabular arrangement based questions. You generally expect two sets of four questions each. Over and above that, data structure or the typical input output based variety also has presence of one or two sets. If there is a set, set generally is of four questions. So on their good day, data structure may have a representation of eight questions, otherwise four questions. The remaining part of the section generally has varieties based on directions, blurred relation, series, patterns, syllogism, coding decoding, etc. So that was the structure of reasoning section of NMET that will help us understand the preparation plan or the strategy for this section. First thing is to do practice of each of the varieties, be it blurred relation, be it direction, be it coding decoding or series or syllogism or pattern or set theory, etc. If you have a good share of tabular based questions, we should ensure that we also do good practice of tabular based questions or sets. 
As I mentioned, input output based sets do have the presence of one or two sets, which will ensure that our material, our practice includes decent variety of this part as well. If we see carefully, most of the students generally prepare for CAT and they write all other examinations. The dominant exam CAT doesn't have the reasoning section in line with the ANMAT. So if you have prepared for CAT thoroughly in past, you might not be very thorough with the typical questions that ANMAT asks. For example, verbal reasoning part or the single questions based on directions or, or blood relation, you might not find them in a typical CAT paper. So a CAT aspirant should align the preparation with ANMAT. Knowing a concept is not sufficient because ANMAT is an exam which demands speed. You must practice to get the right speed and accuracy together in an ANMAT exam reasoning section to get the right cutoff. Ultimately, the best practice is when you are ready to attempt mock ANMAT paper. When you reach a reasoning section, you have a job of reaching approximately 32 to 34 genuine attempts in that limited time of 38 minutes. For that, I believe seeing the last 4-5 years paper, verbal reasoning is the key. Those questions can be attempted very easily at a very fast pace and they give you the much needed momentum. All the questions come in a random order. So whenever you come across a set of let's say tabular arrangement or let's say a set of uh, data structure, either they are very good bunch of questions that can be attempted back to back 4 questions or it can be a speed breaker. You need to take some quick decisions when you come across a set of tabular arrangement or data structure. That is all about the preparation plan or preparation strategy for quant, data interpretation and reasoning section of NMAT. All the best.